Hi everyone, I'm Mike Abadi. Welcome back to VT Blogosphere TV. We are at our 37th episode. We are at our first episode of the new year. And if it's the turning of the calendar, as is the tradition, you may know that John Odom will be our guest to help us understand what just happened in 2011 and what's going to happen in this pivotal election year. Um, John is the publisher of Green Mountain Daily, which is the state's premier, oh, we'll say progressive, but small p progressive blog. And um, he also has recently picked up a print gig uh, with The Bridge, which is uh, a Montpelier Weekly, bi-weekly? Bi-weekly. Strictly speaking, it's twice a month. Care to opine on uh, differences between writing in, in the blogosphere and uh, writing for guidelines and parameters? Or are you finding that a smooth transition? Well, there it went. Uh, recently, I wrote um, a piece that I rather liked. <laughs> <laughs> and they did not. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I went back out and completely rewrote it into something different that they liked much better. And, and I, I still liked the first one better. So, <laughs> you know, so that's a different, different experience. So on um, Green Mountain Daily, it's you know, a team, but they aren't vetting, you aren't vetting each other's work. Eddie Garcia isn't deciding whether your post goes up or vice versa. Right, right. <clears throat> and, you know, to an extent, um, you know, we'll go in if we see typos in each other's work and edit mm. them, although, although you know, some you know, it's a group blog, and some of the members of the group are, you know, more sensitive about that than others. But, um, but it also, you know, blogging allows, blogging is, it's, um, it's you know, they, we talk about diaries that we're putting up, and that's much more the quality of it. You're writing it, you know, from your own perspective, based on your own experience, your own thoughts. It can be very stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. or, or people, you know, some people will put a lot more effort into it and, and really structure it like a, like they're structuring a, a news article, you know, somebody like, um, you know, J.D. Walt, John Walters, I mean, you look at his stuff, it's, it's a lot more considered and structured. Mine has always been very stream of consciousness. So that's it's been the joy of the medium for me. You know, I'm dealing with kids and I've got 10 minutes and I go, <laughs> boom. And then maybe I come back a couple hours later and I notice some terrible spelling errors and I go in and fix them. But right. um, it's a little different than working in print. Sure, sure. <laughs> and you're not a blogger who's sort of over reliant on the f bomb or anything. So I imagine the the move to print hasn't been um, cramped your style too no. terribly. And I've, <clears throat> I've worked in print before. I had a you know a political column briefly in a, a, a weekly paper out of uh, Stowe that served Lamoille County. Mm -hmm. it used to be delivered to most houses in Lamoille County. That was a few years ago. Okay. So, um, and other than that, the occasional just op-ed I've sent in, but. Right. Um, now on to figuring out uh, where we are in the great timeline of American history. Um, you uh, kicked off the year with a post entitled, Here's to 2012, parentheses, because 2011 royally sucked. <laughs> and uh, so the, f the last and final word on uh, 2011, um, you want to just share a little about uh, Per, little perspective taking on that. Uh. Oh well, that was actually more of a personal statement than a than a political one. Although I pulled <clears> in the the political, just you know, it just seemed like one of those years where where nothing. Uh, I think a lot of things did not go right. And you know what's weird? It's like you know when you 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 feel like the day is speeding by really fast, and you talk to your friends, and they all feel the same way. You know mm -hmm. how we all have these weird sort of yeah sort of experiences. Yeah, Wormholes of time. Kind yeah, of I don't know what that is, but 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 bad luck. Bad, you know, bad by the sense of oh, this was a bad year. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me. Like most people I know, yeah. say oh yeah, yeah, I got a bad crummy year. list from 2011. Yeah, too. yeah, and, and you know, some of it's age. You know, I was middle age, and the, the years are getting a little more challenging every year. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was worse than that. It was. Um, you know, there was there was some rough stuff, and and for for the GMD front pages, oof. You know, I really can't complain. Some of them have, have had have had you know horrendous years. So um, yeah, so it sucked. But but there was also you know a lot of a lot of or a lot. There was also an element of political commentary in that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, or, or not necessarily political, but just just broader than the personal. I mean, obviously, 
we had to deal with uh, with Irene, and mm -hmm. Irene wasn't even you know the only instance of flooding we had in Montpelier. We had the flooding. Right, you had a spring back in back in May, or I guess it was May. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a doozy. Although you know we personally in my house were very lucky to mm -hmm. be, to be spared from all that, even though we're in the flood zone. Um, so that was rough, and that was it was rough to see you know the the damage. Um, you know, which, which is still hitting people. And, you know, politically, um, uh, just the, the incredible paralysis uh, as, the, as that new, the new, you know, Republican Tea Party caucus right, really the 2010 itself, election. Um, was, uh, it was, was tough to watch. Now, you know, there were good things, too. We had the, the Occupy movement, mm -hmm. which well, late whatever year, its right. flaws and, and foibles is, you know, uh, it's, it's a terrific thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting to, to see uh, people get into talking about the flaws and foibles. Um, you know, why don't they have more of a message here? You know, why don't, you know, why do they play so many drums? Why don't they take more baths? Or, you know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Feeding all those stereotypes. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and all that stuff, you know, I, I don't get, I'm not one of the people who gets particularly angry when people, when people talk about that because people are going to talk about whatever they want to yeah. talk about. And, and you know, yeah. that's the way it is and that's life and that's fine. But but it is funny because all the people who were worrying about about that on the on the left do lose sight on just what a what a, a tremendous plus this is. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's not exactly the movement that any particular pundit would have planned. But it has been an extraordinary thing yeah. to see, and yeah. it has changed the conversation. Right. It continues to change the conversation, right. and and it's it's really I mean it's it's really impacted. The, the political race already. You've got, you know, President Obama now sounding like well, a populist. It's an election year, yeah. Yeah, it's an election it's year. It's not a policy year. <laughs> it's an election year, but but this is a, the guy who you probably never felt, who wasn't heading in the direction of feeling the need to go that way. Right, right, right. You know, he wasn't feeling the need to, yeah. to differentiate himself. Clearly, something in the polls is telling him, you know, this Occupy business, right. some of the rhetoric is resonating with people. Sure. You know, is it phony? Sure. <laughs> but the, well, but, it's but probably the, <laughs> less phony than Rick Perry well, talking sure, about vulture capitalism. I mean, you know, <laughs> part of him, you know, it, it does resonate with part of the guy, I'm sure. Uh, but would this be his first choice? You know, no. Would this be, you know, his, his, his advisors, you know, where they envisioned going, mm -hmm. how they envisioned running, um, you don't know. Of course not. But the the fact that he is is a reflection, just on um, on how much the the center of debate and how much the conversation has changed. Right. And that's just huge. Right. I mean, you want the 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 you want the phonies to start parroting your rhetoric instead <laughs> of the the rhetoric of the other side. Cause yeah. It, it, yeah. It matters. Yeah. The. Uh 2011 felt a lot like a, a very kind of regressive year that started to get sane towards the end. When, <laughs> um, look, poll, polls overwhelmingly showing um, Americans supporting, um, just getting in incoming inequality and corporate power on the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you get those issues through, you know? Um, Brian Williams, who is, who is who's extremely wealthy, and he's working for a corporation. Now, are those the two things he wants to well, talk exactly. about? No, I mean those <laughs> issues, to an extent, in a sense, have always been on the table. It's just that they get then taken by um, the you know by the pundits, by a lot of the the, the legacy media mm -hmm. professional types, <clears throat> and you just put a slight. Just, just a slight spin on it when you talk, and suddenly you're sounding like a tea partier. Yeah, um, and they work to make it like this is a blame Obama movement, right? Yeah. They're like, there, we did it. We connected A to B, and our yeah. job's done. <clears throat> yeah, the Occupy folks have just been loud and consistent enough that it's it becomes... At, at first, it becomes, it becomes harder to put that spin on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then, you know, once it breaks through... You know, and, and these guys suddenly, they're having fun talking about it. Then, right, you know, get them going. And right, right. Now in uh, in Vermont, we, um, I, I guess officially, we have a, a rock star governor with uh, Rolling Stone magazine naming him one of the most superest. What is it? Was it fifty most? It was 10. 10? Oh, that's, that's um, a short Rolling list. Stone had a, I think it was 10. Maybe it was 12. Anyway, it was either 10 or 12. Uh, I think it was 10 uh, leaders who were actually accomplishing something or something mm -hmm. like that. 
And um, boy, and Shumlin just pops up on so many of these lists. You know, this isn't the first time I've seen his name on something like this. I mean, all these, a lot of folks, you know, wondering if uh, he isn't going to do this for a few years and then try to run for president himself. You got hmm. to wonder. But anyway, he was on the list with folks like, um, you know, Van Jones and, um, uh, you know, there was the, uh, the mayor of Los Angeles and there's the, the governor of Oregon, um, who was also the governor of Oregon when I lived in Oregon back in the 90s. So I'm not sure how that He's worked. He's been there quite a while. <laughs> well, they have, they have uh, term limits for, uh, was it successive terms? You can do two terms mm. in a row. So he had to, I think that's it. He had he to even come back. And he had to come back, right. But, um, uh, and he's, another, he's someone who was being talked about for president too. Right. Now you keep um, a uh, GMD odds maker on uh, the sidebar at Green Mountain Daily, which is um, your guesstimation of uh, the chances that Shumlin will face either a primary or a progressive challenger. Yeah. Um, and that jumped from was it like 200 to 1 and then it went to 40 to 1? Um, <laughs> so just what tea leaves were you reading <laughs> well, uh, to uh, move, move those numbers? So say, it's still at 40 yeah, to 1. But nothing, <clears throat> nothing, nothing magic. That's not, that's not inside, um, no, you know, no inside uh, scoop there. That was just reading the comments in the paper from, from Anthony Polina, who while you know, nominally technically a Democrat is still obviously the, you know, the big honcho of the, the Progressive Party. Mm -hmm. um, he's nominally both right now. Is he still a party? Well, member? I guess is, is, I don't know if he's a, uh, a, a Dem prog or Slash. just, I guess he probably is. Um, but um, yeah, he had made some comments. Uh, he had made some comments a few months ago, which actually, um, maybe just a couple months ago, inspired me to set up the odds maker anyway. Because, you know, of course, Shumlin has got a, a, a a fairly clear strategy for positioning himself as a um, uh, politically uh, to create a sort of identity for himself that he can continue to run on, and that's you know this guy who's basically a you know fiscal conservative but, mm -hmm. but has you know a couple uh, you know far-reaching progressive uh, visions and sort of try to split the issues, there. mavericky maybe we can, <laughs> we can say, um, and those would be health care and 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 Yankee and and energy to an extent, mm -hmm. or to an extent that we, we shall see, I Energy guess. big picture, um, right. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, he had said, he, he had murmured about some unhappiness, you know, so there's going to be unhappiness from the left with Shemlin, there's going to be unhappiness from the right, and that's more that Ozmaker is, is trying to keep an eye on the unhappiness from the left, because the left in Vermont is very, um, they, can be, they can be somewhat unpredictable, um, they can be very almost impulsive. Um, that's probably not the right word, but, but, but something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just sort of keeping, keeping an ear open to, uh, you know, I've had it suggested from some people who think it'd be more likely to have somebody, you know, bounce in on the Democratic ticket running against him, um, you know, maybe essentially someone looking for attention who might not be a, uh -huh. consider themselves a Democrat in any way, but may come into that, that ballot line um, and try to, try to get some primary attention. Right. Um, or just the idea of a progressive. And most recently, Anthony Polina did say something, you know, except for a couple of those issues, um, he was pretty unhappy with, um, uh, with Shumlin, said on most of their issues, he didn't see him as any different from Jim Douglas, um, the Republican who just left. And given that that was the second time he'd said something like that, and that's a very strong statement to make, don't see any difference between him and Jim Douglas, mm -hmm. Felt like all right, you got to take it down to forty to one. Forty to one, obviously, <laughs> is all is, is still long odds. Right, right. I right. mean, that's very long odds. You don't want to go in and you know bet on the forty to one candidate if you're going to the you know the, the tracks. Um, but uh, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. So that's what I was shooting for with that. Sure. Uh, my my maximum I go to my meter pegs at two fifty to one. That's where I go up to, and it's sort of impossible. And that's right now where the the, the Democratic. Uh, Primary possibilities okay. because I don't hear anything. I don't hear the sign of, of, of you know, one of these perennial candidates, you know, who's looking for a ballot or, mm -hmm. who, you know, coming into land. I mean, they could show up. But, right. um, and is it Randy Brock who's thrown his hat into the ring in, uh, on the Republican side? Yes. Yes. And he'll be the only one. And his background, just the. 
thumbnail for him? Or is well, he's a, he's a senator from uh, Franklin County, and he is the former uh, state auditor. Okay. Um, he, uh, he got in there, he, he defeated Elizabeth Reedy after, um, <laughs> I, I, guess, I, guess the, I guess the Reedy rule would be you're, you're, you're allowed two scandals before the, the uh, uh, voters will vote you out. Because, see, what was it? The first one was, the, was a, the thing about her resume, I believe. There was some questions that she had pumped up her resume that they tried to use that against her. She still got in there with a slightly lower vote margin. Mm -hmm. And the next year when Brock was running, there was the issue of the cell phone use, and I guess the, on the... On the the state's dime, the state's and dime. then that's where she lost. So, you know, I guess you get two you strikes. Get two. Yeah. You get two. Okay. Um, so he kind of squeaked in there. All right. Um, he, it, so it's, it's definitely Shumlin's, uh, Shumlin's job to lose, but he is, I mean, he is up. The people will get a chance to speak on his uh, job performance for the last two years. It is Shumlin's <clears throat> race to lose. Um, Brock is a, the candidate a lot of the Republicans were hoping for. Because he's, you know, he's he's well spoken. He's intelligent. He can he can you know he can give you a lot of information, a lot of detail. Hmm. But he is not a strong candidate. Um, we might see decent policy debates. We we could, but but I really don't think he's a strong candidate. I don't think he's um, um, I don't think he's as good in front of the cameras as, as as he might be. I think he's I think he's had a fairly easy time of like I say when he. Did run for statewide office, getting in there, um, uh, you know, with a little help from Elizabeth Reedy, and then he couldn't hold it when Tom Salmon defeated him, uh, you know, later. So uh, I don't think he's that strong a candidate. Uh, it, I think it's Shumlin's to lose, uh, and Shumlin is obviously going to be running to an extent on how well he handled um, the Irene cleanup, mm -hmm. which, you know, he's gotten universal acclaim for yeah. that. No, nobody. Has anything but 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 positive yeah. comments? Made stuff work. Yeah, he absolutely has. <clears throat> um, so um, now, your your piece about 2011 into 2012 uh, ended on the note of flux. Election years create flux, mm -hmm. um, and we do have another major um, name in the state um, running. Um, Bernie Sanders' seat is up. Um, he's part of the. Uh, Class of 2006, which was a, a huge year for the Democrats in the Senate. It was the, what, John Tester from Montana came in, Claire McCaskill, Missouri, Webb in Virginia, things, places you think of swing states and red states, um, the Democrats did really well, and so the Dems will be really def defending in the Senate. Um, oh, yeah. Um, you, you say it was... 11 unsafe kind They've of got races. 10 or 11 races they need to watch. Um, the Republicans only have like, boy, you know, two or three they need to watch. So, I mean, he, I was a betting man here. Uh, you know, the odds are that the Republicans are going to take the Senate. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a for sure. Obviously, you know, as you were saying before, and the, the, the dynamics at the top of the ticket with the presidential can have a strong effect. Right. Um, right. And, you know, as I think I was saying back to you, most people in most of the country, they don't see the ticket split the way we do in Vermont. So, you know, if, if, they're, if they're drawn towards, you know, preferring to vote for President Obama because there's maybe a crazy person <laughs> or something running on the other side, then they're going to be a lot more likely to, you know, to vote D down the ballot. Sure, sure. Right. Let's make sure the nuts don't, don't get in power. So right. well. um, <laughs> not that that would ever happen. Um, but Bernie... Uh, first term senator, the junior senator from Vermont is looking, I mean, what he got 65% against Tarrant. Yeah, so um, who, is he going to break that? Is that his goal here? Or, well, mean, he'll break it if he doesn't <laughs> get pull a candidate to run against him. I mean, that's, that's the thing is nobody seems to be stepping up. It's, um, um, you mentioned Salmon earlier. He made noises and... Uh, and he's staying put. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't heard anything. And, you know, maybe by the time this... Um, actually shows on, on cable there'll be a name. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the time when you start hearing those names because the, you're in that, that, that sort of petri dish of the, of the state house legislative session right. where people start talking to each other and yeah, yeah. the conversations could happen a lot more yeah. quickly, so zoom, things can grow. Right. Um, and you know, the same is, there's a lot of, a lot of stasis going on there. I mean, the Dems, there's nobody, uh, as far as I know, talking about running against Phil Scott for lieutenant governor. 
I mean, they're very likely to give him a free pass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I heard that described by, you know, one person up there as a suicide mission. Um, they feel like he's so strong. Um, you know, a situation like that on the left hand, on the left side, that probably would open up the opportunity for a, a progressive to step in and at least um, get a lot of attention, even if they didn't win, get some attention, get their issues out there, make sure they, they, they lock in that major party status. Um, so I'm sure that would happen. Right. You know, usually when you hear, boy, all the incumbents are looking safe, that usually means the populace is happy. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know what, what that means. We just got some good personalities up there right now, or is it or Vermont's feeling like, boy, that's, the, that's probably the best we can do when looking at the, the national seat. Yeah. Certainly Bernie is uh, an outlier in the Senate. Um, and uh, you wrote recently on his work with, what is it, Citizens United uh, legislation that actually doesn't... Um, Mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't actually address Citizens United because Citizens United was a, a yeah. non-profit. Do you want to get into the, well, the minutia of that? That's, that's one of those hard things to write because <clears throat> you're, like, you're looking at this, this amendment and the, and the legislation you're talking about is, you know, is, is um, uh, Bernie's got a bill that would start the process of creating a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's dubbed as a constitutional amendment to respond to the Citizens United uh, case, the Citizens United versus the uh, Federal Election Commission, I guess, um, in which um, uh, I think probably everybody's heard about this or now on the, the Supreme Court blew the lid off and basically allowed this, this organization, Citizen United, said, yeah, okay, you can go in. It was it, it involved a, a bunch of ads they were running against Hillary Clinton um, and they said, nope, it's not election, it's free speech. You can't put you a can, lid on speech. You can't put a lid on. They can, people can give to this as much as they want. You can run as much of this stuff as you want. As long as, you know, as long as there isn't a coordination with another campaign, then, you know, the boom. Um, which, yeah, so money is, is, is a wash in the, in the system even more than ever. Um, so anyway, Bernie's bill would create the process, since this is, keeps coming back to the idea of, of speech, and corporate personhood, you know, the corporations are people and you can't you know restrict their free speech I'm not sure how that works exactly because we do restrict the contributions of individuals but you know whatever um, uh, so this would basically specifically change the Constitution put an amendment that says um, you know corporations are not people uh, and specifically say for the purposes of elections they can be regulated blah 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 mm -hmm. um, so it's a great thing grand thing, except that specific in the amendment, it says this applies only to for-profit corporations. For-profit corporations can be considered people. It repeatedly says that, you know, we can, you know, restrict for-profit corporations. And Citizens United was ac is actually a non-profit. Mm -hmm. So he's got this amendment <laughs> that, that where it's a good thing, is not going, would not affect would Citizens no United, return. even though it's being pitched as help us you know, turn back the Citizens United ruling, working, right. you know, Citizens United, change Citizens United, well, this wouldn't do it. And, you know, there are problems with it. Even if the thing goes through, then fine, every day all this money just gets channeled the same way through nonprofits. For profits set up nonprofits, right? Right, right. <clears throat> I mean, that's done all the time, and mm -hmm. it's, it's it, like I say, it wouldn't change this particular instance. Right. So there, there are a lot of people saying, so what's the point? Um, I mean, the point would be, I, I would think if you could get this passed, you know, you've broken through that, that, uh, that hurdle. You, you, you're going to have to get through to people's consciousness and get a, uh, you know, a, right. a, a, a sort of populist momentum yeah, behind yeah. you to get it done that maybe then it's a little push to go to the nonprofits. But, you know, he, he set this up so that, he, so that they wouldn't hit labor unions. Um, and if you really want to leave them sacrosanct, then you're going to leave open, you know, unless you specifically carve an exception for labor unions, uh, which I guess he didn't want to do, uh -huh. um, then you're going to leave this wide open hole. So, right. you know, you got to right. close the hole for everybody or nobody. Now, um, a foot in the, in, in the, in the state, in, in towns throughout the state, there is a movement to get on the town meeting ballot a uh, statement of, um, it's, I believe it's just saying, hey, state legislature and, and hey, federal representatives, please w work on, um, and I don't know if it's coordinated with um, 
with Bernie's bill or not, but there's... I it started earlier. It did start earlier? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's coming up. Uh, I think the signatures have to get to, um, to the towns by the last week of this month, and then we'd be voting on a town meeting day. We'll see how many towns pick it up, but um, some of that Occupy uh, push from uh, the fall maybe uh, spilling over into our own town meetings would be something to see. Um, now, I am wondering if you think uh, Romney's a lock. We just had the New Hampshire primary. <clears throat> well, it's a, it's, a, it's a safe money. Um, you know, South Carolina is the one that's going to change everything or, or not. Mm -hmm. um, the only one who has the money to, uh, uh, who might have the money to stop him at this point would be Gingrich. He's being funded by a multimillionaire uh, uh, mogul in the gambling industry there. So the question is, and obviously Ron Paul's in it for the long haul, so the question is by the time it gets to uh, Vermont, are we going to be right. Are we going to be looking right. at just Romney Paul or Romney Paul Gingrich? Sure. Santorum is not going to last past um, South Carolina, even if this little cadre of evangelicals that's meeting to get behind somebody gets behind him. Right. Yeah. And um, any and all voting age Vermonters can vote in the Republican primary. Would you advise a good progressive to do such? <laughs> no, you know, actually, I don't really like that. You don't like I, that? I, I, I'm, I'm a purist about it. You know, I, I did the whole crossover years ago and, and vote for, for uh, Fred Tuttle, um, <laughs> and I felt bad afterwards. Did I you? feel like, you know what, I'm not a Republican, and the people who are Republicans should get to pick their own guy. Okay. And just, I'm, I'm a, a purity of the process guy. So. Okay. Yeah, there are open primary and closed primary states, and we're pretty, we're about as open as you can be, aren't we, we're, the way we define yeah. our primary? Um, so thanks, John. Um, it is, uh, now you actually helped us um, get through that painful night election 2010. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, might be bothering you in, uh, not, you know, don't need a commitment, but might be bothering you in November to come visit for a little bit oh. in November. You may already be booked. No, but, no, that's fine. Uh, no, we got please. a we got a big night coming up. Uh, please do. I'll probably I might have another blog launched by then too. Wowie. Okay. I'm thinking about. I actually not thinking about. It. I will be launching a, a, a another blog. Domain today. name bot. Care to care to break it? Leftygeek.com. <laughs> oh, that's good. And progressive politics and geek culture. Excellent. So I can do oh, everything. Man, I want to talk. I get my Spock ears out. Exactly. That's there exciting. Um, heard it here first. Uh, you got a uh, launch date? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Soon. By town meeting. You want to give yeah, yourself a yeah. deadline? Oh, I think it will be by town meeting. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thanks, everyone, and thanks for kicking off the year so well. <laughs> Boom. Right. Night. Thanks for having me. All right. Over the coming decades, going to be able to balance our budget and not spend more than we take in, we have to make sure that the promises we make in Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare are promises we can keep. And there are various ways of doing that. One is we could raise taxes on people. That's not the way that... Corporations are people, my friend. We can raise taxes on... Of course they are. Everything corporations earn ultimately goes to people. So, where do you think it goes? What, what? Whose pockets? Whose pockets? People's pockets. Okay, human beings, my friend.